Hello, it's Kathy Forstall coming back to you with a, your my second um, video in the series about Fifty Shades of Grey. And this one is going to be focused on the issue of erotica. Um, I heard a lot of people say that um, Fifty Shades of Grey is just fiction, so what's the big deal? It's just entertainment. And I want to address that a little bit. First of all, I want to show you this book written by... Um, Dr. Julie Slattery and Dana Gresh. It's called Pulling Back the Shades. And um, Dr. Slattery is a clinical psychologist. And here's what she has to say about um, it being just fiction. She says, I will say with great confidence that these books are not merely fiction, a story that could be true but is not, but are actually fantasy, something that could not possibly be true. Erotica lures you into a different reality, but doesn't let you know that you are entering a world far, far away. E.L. James states that redefining morality is actually part of her agenda. So this isn't just fiction. There's a lot more to this. Now, if we want to go to the genre of erotica, we can see that it's entertainment for some people, maybe. If you're not a Christian, then you may entertain yourself in certain ways, but Christian women really should have no part in this. Here's just a, a book review about another erotica um, book series, and um, you know, maybe these aren't as popular as Fifty Shades of Grey, but they've probably sold quite a few copies themselves. So here's the um, overall idea in this series. Have a naughty new year. We're ringing in the new year with a batch of erotica about new beginnings. In Kate Allure's playing doctor collection, Dr. Lauren Marks gets over the dissolution of her marriage with the help of a young, gorgeous intern court. While lonely widow Angela finds similar solace with her ranch hand come boy toy in cowboy heaven. So, that's erotica and that's what 50 that's the genre that 50 shades of gray really falls into so what really surprised me was when i read this other article from time magazine and how a group of women from westchester county were um just enamored with this and i'm going to read straight from the article so you can see what i mean what started across the atlantic as one of as one woman's desire to bravely express her lurid desires had created sensual upheaval as well as an ad hoc community of empowered women bound by their shared discovery of pleasure in the unlikeliest of places, the suburbs. In mid-January, I attended a book party in New York City for James, who was literally overwhelmed to tears of joy and alarm by a a pack of hundreds of middle-aged women acting like adolescent girls unleashed on Justin Bieber. I'm completely and utterly stunned by the reaction of these books, James would tell me. A few days later, at my apartment, all the women in attendance claimed the same of themselves, forever changed and all for the good. Okay, I forever changed? I'm like, okay, I get the midlife expression of sexual dissatisfaction, but a soft porn book series changed their lives? Um, and these were wealthy women, so this is all over the spectrum. And doesn't money buy happiness? Obviously not. That brings me to the third issue that I mentioned before about current events, and that's jihad, Jihadi John. Psychopaths aren't always the poor and disenfranchised. They are the hard-hearted. How they got that way and how they can be healed are two of the dilemmas that Fifty Shades addresses but they got the second part way wrong and that is that you can pull a man out of his sin and help him to be healed by um, going there with him that is the farthest thing from the truth and anyone that knows anything about domestic abuse would tell you that and I'm going to share that with you in the next video about domestic abuse so I'm gonna let you go for now and tune in to the next video on domestic abuse